what's going on people back with another one man and um damn glass is foggy already wow summertime man it's hot even at night glass is fogging up y'all bear with me um yeah, we're going to get right into it, man. Y'all know I'm bringing the Bible out. So, go get your Bibles. Let's get in these scriptures, man. I'm in the King James Version. I'm going to hit some New Living Translation. I might even hit some New International Version or some Good News Translation. I love, I, I deal with other translations, man. But the, the, the base, right? The structure, the crust, the core is going to be found in the King James, man. This is what everything is built around. All of these other translations is a translation of the King James. The King James is an original translation of the Hebrew and the Greek text that were found, right? It's a word for word translation. All of these other translations are a thought for thought translation. And sometimes it can mess you up, right? Sometimes it's the wrong idea in some of these translations. It's what most Christian contemporaries or you know a lot of the Christian commentary is bias right it leads a certain way and you can see that in a lot of these different translations right how it just totally changed up the whole meaning of a verse or or scripture or a precept or a chapter inside which was in the original King James you know some words were added some words were took away and it just changed up the whole thought it changed up the whole idea or the whole original meaning of it and you really have to study the scriptures and, and be careful with it right you have to be careful with those other translations you got to go back to the King James read it and then go with the other translations that's why I say the King James is the original English text it's the best translation to English that we're going to get and those other translations are are a, 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 a trying to explain in layman terms or right or in modern English what that old English was saying in the King James right but without further ado man the name of this video is called God is not all love right you hear a lot of people say that oh God is love God is love God is all love well we finna read some scriptures where he ain't loving on nobody, man. Where he's destroying. And where he's full of wrath and anger and indignation, man. And taking people out. And warning people of a coming destruction, man. You gotta understand the balance of the Most High, man. Yeah, he is love. He loves his people. He loves righteousness. He loves good. And he hates evil, right? You got to have a balance of love and hate, just like the Most High. Everything is balanced, man. You got to be well-rounded out here. You can't love a sinner. People say God loves the sinner. No, he don't. The Bible don't say that. The Bible say he hates the sinner. The Bible says that the sinner's prayers are an abomination to the Lord. But um, we're going to start off in the book of Malachi, man. Let's go to the book of Malachi. Let's go to chapter 1. Let's go to 1-1. One, one. I'm going to read probably all the way to verse 4, all right? Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. God's love for Jacob. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Verse 2, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We were impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down. 
and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Indignation forever. Forever. Who are these Edomite people? These are the people from the Caucasus Mountains. Edom is the descendant, well, Esau, his descendants were called the Edomites, right? And we all know the story. Jacob came out, Esau came out red. He had no color in his skin. He was red. He was pink. What people are like that on this earth right now? What people have no melanin? Caucasoid. The Caucasus Mountains. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 16, there is no end to the people. There is no end to the nations. So the same nations in the Bible are the same people walking around here right now. And the Edomites are the Caucasians. You can do the research. They know who they are. They know who they are. Who's red? They say we're white and you're black. But I'm not black, I'm brown. My hair is black, my skin is brown. They're not white, they're red. <laughs> Don't they call themselves rednecks? Come on, people. Wake up. Do your research. <laughs> Because I did mine. And we don't really have time to go through that. So let's go to the book of Nehemiah. Let's see some more. But let me get that indignation first. Alexa, what's the definition of indignation? Indignation is usually defined as strong displeasure at something considered unjust, offensive, insulting, or base. Righteous anger. Righteous anger? The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Righteous anger. Indignation forever. Look at what these people are doing to our people, to God's people. Every 28 hours, somebody's gunned down by a Edomite police officer. An unarmed black man is gunned down by a white cop every 28 hours. still to this day why have none of them stood up for our reparations not one no groups have been built nobody marched and stormed the capital for what happened to our people there's no payment or no repayment for all of the all of the buildings that we built by slave labor who's apologizing for it has there ever been any apologies for slavery for what they did to our people has did George Zimmerman ever do a public apology for killing Trayvon Martin? Did Derek Chauvin do a public apology for killing George Floyd? And there are numerous others. Where's the remorse? That's why the Lord has indignation forever for these people, because he know what they are. They true colors always come out. It's racism. It's evil. And they think we all dumb niggas who don't know nothing. Big nose, big lips, stupid niggas. That's what they think of us. You think when they watch all the crazy shit our people do in the news and they say, Honey, come look at these Negroes. Come look at these blacks. No, they say, Come look at these niggers. They tripping. <laughs> up man and see what's really going on out here man these people don't love you and God don't love them 
He says he has indignation for Edom forever. Do your research and find out who the Edomites are. Esau, who are these people? And then hit me back in the comments and tell me what you come up with. Don't take my word for it. Do your research, man. Let's go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah 1. I'm going to start at verse 5. No, I'm going to start at verse 4. Just for some context. And it came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments, the great and terrible God. Terrible? God is known as terrible? <laughs> Y'all didn't know that was in there, did you? The great and terrible God. It's a terrible thing to drown everybody in a flood. It's a terrible thing. This God don't play, man. He will be very terrible to you. He will hold indignation for you. Righteous anger. He will do terrible things to whole towns, whole nations, whole planets, man. He flooded the earth. And Noah and only his family survived. <laughs> That's a terrible thing, man. But it's righteous. It's just because they deserved it. What is he going to do with the wicked people of this time right now who deserve a terrible act of the Most High? It's coming, man. It's some wicked shit going on out here, man. Excuse my language, but it's going down out here, man. Evil is at an all-time high. And God is going to judge this place again with fire this time, not with water. He's going to burn it up. Let's go to Zechariah. Book of Zechariah, chapter 14. We're going to start at 12 and read down. Verse 12, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this should be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. <laughs> you didn't know that was in there. This is a future prophecy, man. This ain't happened yet, but it's coming. Let me read that again. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. That's his holy city, man. His people, the Israelites. Not those imposters that are over there right now. Those people are imposters, man. Those were Germans. Those are Ashkenazim, converts, European converts to Judaism. Those are not the real people. Do your research. I've done several videos on this, man. Who the true Jews are. It's us. The blacks, the Hispanics, the Native Americans. Don't ask me how I know. Do some research on it. Oh, excuse me, y'all. Do your research. Black Indians. Do your research. 
Babylon the Timbuktu. Do your research. The Bible is black history. Do your research. The Negro question. Do your research. They came before Columbus. Do your research. Hiding the Hebrews. Do your research. Negro rulers of Scotland and the British Isles. This book complete. This book tells you King James was a black man. Said he had a swarthy complexion. What is swarthy? Dark. Come on. Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them and they shall lay hold of every one on the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Verse 14, and Judah shall also fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel and great abundance. God is calling the rest of these people heathens, man. These heathens about to get destroyed, buddy. And you want to join hands with them and sing Kumbaya with them. Leave these heathen nations alone. Come together with your own people. They are about to be destroyed for what they all did to you. And what they still doing this day. Nobody likes the nigga, man. Nobody likes the Mexican. Nobody likes the Indians. What happened to the Indians, man? Who came with Negro slaves and slaughtered and murdered these Indians, man? Who was it? Who put us into slavery? Who put the, the Mexicans into slavery? The Spanish? Where is that? Europe. Who put us into slavery? The English? Where is that? Europe. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 13, we're going to go to verse 9. Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. This is a future prophecy, the day of the Lord, right? This is a future prophecy. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. This is a future prophecy in an Old Testament book, right? So when you ever hear... Christians or anybody else tell you, oh, that's the Old Testament, brother. Leave that alone. Why? It's future prophecies in the Old Testament. So we're going to read it all. Christ says you should live off of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word. Isaiah 13 and 9, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, it's coming, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. 
Verse 10, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof should not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make man more precious than fine gold, even a man that even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. See that? Men are going to be more precious than gold. Why? Because a whole bunch of men are destroyed. So when you see one at that time, you're going to be like, bruh, where y'all at? Where y'all been? Especially for the women. Men are going to be more precious than gold. You know why? Because there's going to be so little of them. Because so many of them are wicked. And they walk in their iniquity. And they're proud and they're haughty and they're not going to change. You're going to be destroyed. So you better repent and come back to the Most High and be holy and set apart. Be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Those are the words of Christ. But then you have people who say, man, nobody's perfect, but you ain't going to even try. You're not going to even strive for it. You're just going to go out and be a wicked dog because of a saying. Verse 13, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and the day of his fierce anger. I thought God was all love. I just read to you who he hates forever. <laughs> in Malachi, I just read to you his wrath and his anger. I just read to you in the book of Nehemiah, he's terrible. This God ain't nothing to play with, man. So stop playing. Stop playing with yourself. Because that's really what you're doing. He is a destroyer. And he's going to destroy you. If you don't wake up, repent, and come out of this worldly system. The Bible says, do not love the things of the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world because the world is passing away. But everybody wanted to say, oh, you got to love the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What world is he talking about? Because there's several definitions for the word world. Look it up. Especially in the Greek. And that's New Testament in Matthew or John. That's John 316. Man, that's written in Greek. So look up that word world in the Greek that you Christians love so much. Look it up and see what it means. It don't mean the whole world. It don't mean the whole earth. It don't mean everybody and anybody. Look it up and do your research, man. I'm not finna show you. I showed you already. Don't believe me. Go look it up for yourself. Just get a dictionary. Just ask Google. Get you a Bible app. And go in the Strong's Hebrew lexicon. And define the word world in the Greek. And you'll see who he was talking to. A certain group of people. Not the whole entire planet Earth. 
The Bible says the Most High divided the nations and gave every nation its own heavenly being. But Jacob, he was over Jacob. Let me get that real quick. Time, 24 minutes. I know I like to keep them under 30, just so it posts quick. That's Deuteronomy uh, 32. And we'll get that in the in the GNT because it gives you more understanding of it. Deuteronomy 32 and 8, the Most High assigned nations their lands. He determined where people should live. He assigned each nation a heavenly being, but Jacob's descendants he chose for himself. Who is Jacob's descendants? Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And he had 12 sons and of the 12 tribes of Israel. All the other nations he assigned to each nation a heavenly being, but Jacob's descendants he chose for himself. What these other nations need to do is go back and find that heavenly being that was assigned to them and stop trying to take Jacob's God. Hey, hey, hey. 26 minutes. Let me see. Can I get some more in here? Let's go to Amos. Let's go to the book of Amos. Amos 1. I think I'm going to go with Amos 1, let's go with, let's go to verse 11, Amos chapter 1, verse 11, thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, here come Edom again, right, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever, Edom kept his wrath for Jacob forever. And I told you who the Edomites are. The Edomites are the Caucasians, man. And they kept their wrath for the Israelites forever. You can see it this day. Black versus white is still going on right now. They still call you a nigger, a spick. What they call the Indians, savages. <laughs> it's still going on to this day, man. What did Donald Trump say about the Mexicans? Verse 12, Amos 1, verse 12. But I will send fire upon Timon, which shall devour the places of Basra. Verse 13, thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they ripped open the women with child of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border, because they ripped up the women with child of Gilead. Ripped up up the women with child sound familiar yes it happened in slavery what happened back then in biblical times happened to our people it happened back then it happened again man it's just a repetitive cycle Yes, they cut pregnant women bellies open during slavery. Look it up. They cut your genitals off. Who are these people of Ammon? 
These are Asians. These people are heathens, man. All these other nations are heathens to the Most High, man. These Ammonites, I can't remember, but I think they're Japanese. The Japanese or the Chinese, that's one of those. You got Moab and you got Ammon. One of them is Japanese, one of them is Chinese. And they still don't mess with us. They sell you all kind of abominable foods right there in your neighborhoods. The Edomites let the Ammonites come into our neighborhoods and run all the businesses. They got all the donut shops. They got all the coffee shops. They got all the chicken places. They got all the Chinese food places. The Arabs got all the liquor stores, all the gas stations, all the 7-Elevens. Why can't we have anything? Why all these heathens got to come in our communities and push all of this crap on us? The weed and the cigarettes, the poison, the pork, the shrimp, the lobster and crab, everything that the Most High said not to eat. These people come in our neighborhoods and make big business off of it. And the Edomites let them. The Bible says there is no end to the nations. There is no end to the people. So the people of the Bible are still walking around here today, man. The Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites, the Amalekites, the Japhethites. The Jews or the Jewish, right? And Israel right now call themselves Ashkenazim. Ashkenaz was a person in the Bible. So they're saying that they're direct descendants from that biblical character, but we're not. <laughs> 31 minutes. I might do a part two, but this one was kind of vulgar, and I hope it posts, but shalom. I love y'all, man. And um, repent, man. It's time to wake up, right? Russia's just pulled up in America's backyard, man. Man, the Caribbean islands right now performing military exercises. Russia, America's number one enemy. If they're not number one, they're number two. They're right now and on the island, off the islands of South America performing exercises, shooting off missiles. Who are they practicing for? America is the one that's giving their enemy weapons to destroy them that's ukraine america is funding ukraine and giving them weapons and russia is going against ukraine so in a matter of time russia is going to go against america and they're here they're here they're going to be in our waters for the next couple months throughout the summer performing military exercises look it up It's all coming to a head, man. But we will not be afraid. We will not be shy.